Let's do another learning check. What are three features of the small intestine that maximize absorption? There actually are more than three. These structural modifications are based in increased surface area for absorption. And we, we went over this in a previous video. So here is some reminders of anatomy. Um, we've got circular folds that kind of go this way. We've got villi. Here is a single villus here. We've got microvilli, which are also called a brush border. And then we've got a long tube is, is the fourth possibility. These all modifications allow for a huge surface area for nutrient absorption, um, which mostly occurs in the genome, but um, not only. And so, yeah, there's a reminder, absorption is important. Let's look at how it happens at a cellular level. So let's zoom in to a cell. Here is um, the vil villi, right? Multiple villus. This is, I'm gonna actually just do that one, is a micro villus, if we have more than one. There we go. This is the lumen of our intestine where time, which becomes more and more digested as we go through, um, that's where that's located. We've got interstitial fluid and then we've got a capillary. Our goal is to get stuff, let's just put nutrients for now, from the lumen into the capillary in order to do that, we have to go through the epithelial cell. These are here, this little thing right there is a tight junction. You remember that epithelial cells are linked by tight junctions. Um, it was a feature we talked about in the fall. So um, closely linked stuff cannot go in between, right? We can't um, go in between cells we have to go trans, transcytosis through the cells. So this is gonna be our route of absorption. Two more things to label here. Um, this is gonna be our apical surface. And these are terms we learned when we talked about the features of epithelial tissues. They have an apical surface because they have an outside surface. That's what the lumen is. The apical surface of your Skin cells is the stuff that's facing the air, covered in keratin in that case. This is our basal or basolateral surface. Um, also called membrane. Okay, so this this is this surface here is a membrane. And actually, I want you to think of it as a membrane because we're gonna have to think about going through that membrane. That's not cross that A out. So absorption can occur through several different mechanisms, right? How do we get things to do this? It's transport mechanisms, which I love. So we're going to be referring to active transport. What does this mean? This means it uses ATP. That's what that means. It's a pump. ATP pumps, diffusion, diffusion by nature is passive and it can only occur for hydrophobic substances, right? That's going down an electrochemical gradient as well. Facilitated diffusion, what does this mean? This means we're still doing diffusion, but we're not just going through the membrane. We have a facilitator, a protein channel or carrier. This is through the membrane, the phospholipid, phospholipid bilayer, I'm actually gonna say.
here we are. Secondary active transport. This is a type of co-transport. We're definitely gonna review this does not directly use ATP, relies on gradients that were set up by ATP pumps. And endocytosis. We won't actually use this one um, in, in the methods we go through, the mechanisms, but it is a possibility. Endocytosis and then exocytosis. The, this happens very, so then depending on what that nutrient is, it's going to use different processes. So for example, you already know lipids are able to diffuse through the plasma membrane. This means they are using what process here? Passive diffusion, not facilitated diffusion, because they don't need a protein to carry them through. They can diffuse right across that phospholipid bilayer. We're not going to talk about fats more than this. So this is it right here. Uh, you've seen this before. Bile salts emulsify the fats, allow lipase to ac access them. Pancreatic lipa lipase um, chemically breaks down the triglycerides into smaller chemicals, fatty acids, for example, which then can diffuse through the phospholipid bilayer. The fats are the one exception to this capillary being the, the, the goal. This capillary would go to the portal, hepatic portal vein. Fats are gonna actually enter this lacteal to go to the immune uh, lymphatic system. Eventually we'll also enter circulation, right? So I'm gonna go through proteins and carbohydrates in their mechanisms of absorption next. <laughs>